If I had to say any one of my routines was more important than the others, it would be the morning routine because it's my foundation. It's what allows me on a daily basis to approach everything that I do in a manner that's the same tenacity, the same focus and same discipline and same energy. I've seen the repercussions occur when I don't follow the morning routine and it's not so pretty. I genuinely think that naturally I'm somebody that's really lazy. I can spend days on my bed doing nothing, but a, a solid morning routine in which I'm going to detail in this video allows me to kickstart the day in a manner in which I like, in a manner in which allows me to be productive, in a manner in which I believe is healthy, in a manner in which allows me to, to practically do this consistently. And that's going to be a theme that you see across this morning routine in this video. What I found uh, online when I search up morning routines are these 10 step, 12 step, 14 step morning routines, and they go on for hours. And it, it's, it's the sense where, yes, it looks really cool. And I think that it can be really effective for some individuals. Jewels, but the fact that it's not practical really defeats the whole purpose of a morning routine. It's only powerful when you can do it on a consistent basis because we know it's in the consistency that we're going to be making progress in life. And so this video should actually be pretty short because my morning routine is pretty short, but it's effective. And I hope that you can take some of these ideas and implement them into yours. Uh, so I'm super excited to do this. My name is June Yu. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Again, I think that this video is going to be something that hopefully ignites a level of one, awareness of how important a morning routine is and two, hopefully a practical application for yourself as you try to take on this level of intention when it comes to our mornings because it's really important. I really do think that in the mornings, our brains are open. They're, they're like a new sponge that just came out of the box and you don't want to be putting into it things that aren't necessarily important, things that aren't necessarily true to you, things that are going to be distracting because then I truly believe the rest of your day becomes a manifestation of what you've done in the morning. If you're only putting bad things into your brain right from the get-go, we can only imagine how lethargic you're going to feel going throughout your classes, into the afternoon, throughout your nights. We don't want that to happen. And so let's go immediately into some of the components of my morning routine that I think could be really beneficial for you. The first element of it is obviously waking up and I wake up at 5 a.m each morning. This obviously tends to fluctuate just a little bit, especially if I'm traveling for work, especially if there's a different occurrence that's happening in that day for a particular event. But usually around that 5 a.m., we want to regulate our sleep cycle. So 5 a.m. or finding whatever time works well for you, I think is important. 5 a.m., I wake up that early, not because I think that everyone has to wake up that early, but I've naturally been somebody who's more productive in the mornings, who likes their morning times, and that's what just works well for me. But when I wake up in the morning, it's from a a separate alarm clock than my phone. This is probably the biggest mistake that I see across the board for a lot of people in their mornings. They'll use their phone as their morning alarm clock. Now, why is this an issue? Well, there's a bad habit loop that happens, right? You're tempted to then doom scroll on your social media, and then you spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and although that time might not seem that big of a deal, in reality of the matter, we just talked about what we don't want to be putting into our brains first thing in the morning, and that's going to be meaningless, toxic, negative content that we see. We don't want to do that. We want to ensure that our brain is able to approach the day with a level uh, of focus um, and energy, and that's not the way to start it. So what I do is I have my Alexa of my Alexa Echo Dot. I think that that's what it's called. But really, I just use it nowadays just for my alarm clock and every single day it'll wake me up at the same time. After I wake up and the alarm clock goes off, I'll turn off the alarm with my voice. I'll say, hey, Alexa, turn off alarm. And then what I'll do immediately is turn on my bedside lamps, as you see both behind me. And you're gonna see that this is also a common theme in terms of light because light is going to promote the release of certain neurotransmitters like epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, and things alike. And what that does, it promotes alertness, and that's what you want. You don't wanna be feeling lethargic going out throughout the uh, duration of your day. And I've seen that the mornings when you can get exposure to light and sunlight is obviously the best way you can do this, but I found that I wake up before the sun comes up, and that's okay. I'll just use artificial lighting to, to make, or to compensate. And what I'll also do is I'll open up my blinds, not because the sun is out at that time, but when it does come out, I'll be able to be exposed to it, just right there on my right. Side. And then I have these desk lamps that sit overhead of me and I'll turn those on. So lights are the first thing that I turn on and then I'll immediately go grab a glass of water. I think that that this is such an interesting one because I never really understood why people drink water in the mornings. 
and I, and I thought that that was just kind of a myth in terms of how important it was. I understand that, that our body utilizes fluid and it's important that we hydrate our bodies in the morning, but that's one component of it. But I physically feel much more alert. I feel like my digestion system is going. I feel like, uh, like I'm a lot more alert and, and energized with just a single glass of water. So that's just part of an integral component of my morning routine now that I don't sacrifice ever. And so that's what I'll do immediately. Then I'll go into uh, the bathroom to, to take care of my needs. And then right away, I'll go and sit at this desk. And so that should have only taken about 15, 20 minutes at tops. Usually it's a lot shorter than that. It'll probably just take me like 10 minutes or so. And then I'll get to this desk. And, and the first thing that I do is I open up my scripture reading for that day. And a lot of you guys are already aware of these, but I have three daily wins for myself. And these are internal strength wins. These are my physical wins, my spiritual wins, and my mental wins. My physical and my mental wins will start to occur later on in the day, but the spiritual win is one that I want to ensure that I do first thing because that allows me to really be aligned with my purpose and gives me a sense of direction throughout that day. So I'll do my scripture reading for about, at the low end of it, about 15 minutes, at the high end of it, no longer than 25 minutes. I wanna ensure that I'm reading it, but I also know that I get really tired sometimes in the morning and the last thing that I want to do is like fall asleep or feel really, really lethargic coming out of that reading. So about 15, 25 minutes is more than enough where I can comprehend it, I can analyze it. And if I want to go back to the reading, I will go back to it later on at night. And so after I go through that scripture reading, literally what I'll do is, is actually I have it on my desk right now. It's this gravitational um, alarm timer where I don't know if I have to cover my face for it, but as I turn it, the timer will start to, to go. And I'll put this on for about 30 minute intervals, 60 minute intervals. It kind of depends on what type of work that I'm trying to complete, but this is my peak productivity window. This is when I really started. So for about, let's say three hours from like 5.45 to, to 8.45, that's what I'll call my deep work session. And I'll have a break in between it but this deep work session is something that I call my peak productivity window I am most focused most energized in the mornings I know that and so I want to leverage it for my most demanding task and when I am going ahead and trying to figure out what my most demanding tasks are it's a great thing that I've made sure that I did that the night prior that's why I think it's really important that we go ahead and do things in terms of scheduling or planning or in terms of what we're going to prioritize for our tasks the next day the day prior because during that peak productivity time you don't necessarily wasting time trying to figure that out because that could be a little bit time consuming to go in and try to figure out, hey, what do I need to work on today? What do I prioritize? But if I spent just like 10, 15 minutes the night before, while I'm already in the process of doing some of that work, I feel a lot more focused the next day where I can just get right into it. Another element of this is I always take the time the night prior to, to open up my tabs if I'm going to be using my computer or to get things um, in terms of the material for my workstation. And then in that, again, I don't waste time trying to, to pull out things or remembering what I had to pull out. It's already set. It's ready to go. And for me during that peak productivity time, I can go ahead and just really, really fixate on the work. And a lot of that work has to do with business. A lot of that work has to do with school. A lot of that work sometimes has to do with content creation. A lot of that work has to do with some really, really big projects that I'm taking on with my team behind the scenes. A lot of that work had to do with writing the learning system book. I don't know if you can even see that, but a learning system book that's all written up here, written by me, designed by me, um, and all that stuff took took a ton, a ton of effort. So that's what I would spend my mornings doing. And so within that middle gap, after I go about like 45 minutes or an hour and a half of work, I definitely need to take a break and I'll take a break with some caffeine. Um, I do love coffee. I don't drink it every single day, but there are moments in which I think that it's really beneficial for my alertness and focus. And it's a good way to kind of step away from my desk, get some coffee in me, and then I'm again focused for that second bout with again a total time of about three hours for that peak productivity window from let's say 5.45 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. And then the next element to this is going ahead and grabbing some food. I am somebody that, that doesn't necessarily want to eat too heavy of a breakfast. It's funny because my dad eats really heavy breakfasts and I think it works well for him. But when I was younger, he would make me do that with him and I didn't realize the effect it would have on my energy levels throughout the afternoon. And what happened to me was I would really crash and, and I didn't want that. And so now I just eat a lot lighter breakfast Breakfasts and I'll bring snacks with me throughout the day. And so what are some typical breakfast foods that I'll eat? Well, one, it, it could be just oats and fruit. Again, very light. I like the cinnamon flavored oats. Maybe I put a picture of 
of that on screen here. And, and then the second type of food that I'll eat is just rice with some Korean side dishes. Um, there's something called changjorim and, and my parents make that and it's really, really good. And sometimes when they visit, they'll just give me some of that. And so I'll have some rice, some kimchi and some um, form of like small meat or any type of side dishes like that. Again, that's really, really light for me. Or if I have any type of soup, uh, Korean soup, like the leftovers from the night prior that I made, then great, I'll, I'll eat that as well. And then the third one, if I'm really not that hungry at all, just do yogurt with granola and um, some fruits on top of that as well. And all three of those, there's really light, right? I'm not eating too much of it. It makes me feel full though, and I drink a lot of water throughout that duration too. So I'm feeling ready to go. I feel alert. I'm not feeling too heavy. And then I'll simply go about around 9.20 a.m. and get ready for my classes. And that just means that I'll freshen up, um, look, uh, somewhat presentable for my classes. I don't necessarily dress up or anything like that, but I definitely do like to, to look decent because I think the way that you look establishes a level of confidence for yourself and, and that's gonna affect how you perform. So I do make sure that I spend about like 20, 30 minutes getting ready. And then I'm usually out the door because my classes start about 10 a.m., 10, 15 a.m. And then I'm in classes for majority of my day. I have a combination of bachelor's classes and master's classes and intertwined with those whenever I have gaps. Depending on the, the particular day, I'll have business meetings throughout or I'll have different revisions or priming sessions throughout. That's why it was a little bit difficult to make a video regarding my morning routine because every day could be a little bit different, particular to if it's going to be a weekday or a weekend day, but that was more of an average look at what my morning routine consists of. And hopefully you have a good indication of, of some of those common themes. One was ensuring that everything was, was as simple as possible so that it can be consistent, right? Uh, that it can be practical because that's what matters. And two, there wasn't much um, time for uh, messing around or fooling around, right? It was very much direct in terms of me getting the things that I need to get done and starting my day off on the right footing. I don't even really touch my phone throughout the duration of this time, especially all the way up to my uh, peak productivity window. After my peak productivity window, when I'm like eating breakfast or I'm going ahead and potentially getting ready and I, and I need to check something, then, then I'll use my phone at that time and that's totally fine for me. But that first three and a half hours, four hours in my morning, it really does establish a level of, of productivity, of, of health too. I, I really do think it gives me a level of mental clarity and it's so important that I don't sacrifice that component because if I have that morning routine, even if the remainder of my day for reasons that are completely out of my control go awry, right? If they're, if they're dismantled, it's okay because I had done a lot of my really important things in the morning. And so the rest of the day are going to be for, again, classes or, uh, or business meetings. And then of course, intertwined with me on my two other daily wins of my mental win and my physical wins. But hopefully that was a good good representation that, that was easy for you to digest and realize that it doesn't have to be overly complex. The common themes are going to be consistency, but alongside that, there's a lot of movement, right? Like when, when I'm waking up, I'm going ahead and I'm turning on the lights. I'm going up and um, opening up my blinds. I've already made my bed. I went and, and got a glass of water. Then I went to my desk. And then throughout that middle of that time when I'm taking a break, I went to go grab coffee, which is in my kitchen. Then I'll come back to my desk. There's movement there. And I think that that's a, that's a really, really powerful element of it too, in terms of keeping you awake. There's this really uh, integral component that I'm, I'm going to leave you with. And it's this idea of Mel Robbins' quote where she says, never let your mood dictate what you do. Always take action first because movement changes your mood. And I mentioned this quote a lot just because it's so important. I think a morning routine embodies that idea. You see, if you can do this consistently in these types of actions where you're moving or subconscious to you, it really does change your mood in the right way, right? It allows you to start each day with the right type of footing that you want. So that's going to be it for the video. Again, I told you it was gonna be short, but hopefully that was impactful and hopefully there's elements of that that you can take on. So please leave your comments below in terms of if you think that I can improve upon my own morning routine, if you think that there's levels uh, that, that you want to, to dive deeper into in terms of my morning routine that you want have questions about, I'm more than happy to answer them. Give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe. And until next time, please take care and I'll see you all at the top.